in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Number two. Number three. Now open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere. Shiva kapara kosa da balakato sa prada gebe ne kosa. Shada prakato shka le prada geba rato shka prega debe ne kato. Someone pray. Shada ge debe ne kate praska da balako sa praska debe ne kosa. Make sure you are praying. 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 Shada bereke te praska da balanda pratas kati varatus kali prete ge bereku siata. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Shale ke parus kati prete ge bereku shala kata pratas kada balanda ba. Shabra da ga barata ga praska de bereke te praska de balatus siata. Embra kata praska de bereke te praska de balako shada balanda ba. Shade brekete balatus kate brasko te balatus yata. Hallelujah. Say after me loud and clear. Say, Father, tonight let your light come upon my destiny. Tonight. Let your light come upon my destiny. Go ahead and pray. Let your light drive away every darkness. Let your light take away every confusion. name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we're still praying say father in the name of Jesus I ask for a supply of the spirit of revelation let it fall upon me right now go ahead and pray open your mouth and pray the supply of the spirit of revelation Shake a parus, Kadibala, Shabra, and the Gebeleco Siata. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same.
stand upon the grace that is on our father in the Lord and upon that grace let me prophesy to someone already that in the name of, that is above all names after this conference the Lord will, you, will release you like a trophy to your world after this conference the Lord will release you like a trophy to your world in the mighty name of Jesus Christ For someone else, they have said about you like they said about Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Let me prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who is the lifter of men. May he lift you and make you to be a wonder to your world. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And for someone here maybe you have experienced a level of lifting you have experienced a level of advancement but we measure a thousand cubits for you and we push you deeper into the realm of impact in the name of Jesus Christ for in Jesus mighty name we pray please may I request that for the next few minutes please lend me and lend your destiny dedicated attention because I believe that what you are about to hear will define the next season of your life and destiny in the name of Jesus please be gloriously seated and may the Lord bless you Hallelujah. Two verses and then I'll begin to teach. The first verse I want us to consider is 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, but ye are a chosen generation. Say amen. amen. You are a royal priesthood amen. and holy nation and a peculiar people. The Bible says that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Scripture number two. Matthew chapter 5 please we'll read from verse 13 down to 16 Matthew chapter 5 this was Jesus teaching the disciples and all who were present at the time of this teaching and he was teaching them what we call theologically the Beatitudes Matthew chapter 5 from verse 13 he said ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? He says, it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. 14. We're reading to 16. Verse 14 now. It says, ye are the light of the world. Say, I am the light of the world. <laughs> Prophesy it with conviction. I am the light of the world. The Bible says you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. 15. It says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but upon a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. I love verse 16. 
verse 16 is an instruction and in it's an admonition it says let your light so shine before men the word let is the same word permit permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven may the lord help us tonight in jesus name isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 is a very interesting verse prophet isaiah wrote by the spirit 60 and verse 1 and here's what it says arise shine two very profound instructions instruction number one arise instruction number two shine that means it is impossible to shine except and unless you arise listen very carefully it gives you the instruction then it now tells you the basis for the possibility of honoring that instruction it says arise shine why it says for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i would always like to quote this scripture from amplified the amplified rendition is very interesting here's what it says it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you hallelujah it says for your light is come and the glory of the lord is brilliance is risen upon you now the word arise is a word that is connected to responsibility the word arise immediately tells you that there is a part you have to play in standing up upon your feet when you meet someone who is seated on the floor and you tell the person arise even if you help the man to rise up there has to be an effort a participation on the part of that individual if he intends to leave the floor and to stand up on his feet are we together you need to understand that in this kingdom the realities and the possibilities and the results that we command in this kingdom is not entirely up to god and it is not entirely up to you listen carefully god designed this kingdom to function in a way and a manner that it will always take god almighty in partnership with a willing and obedient man for anything to happen in my life and your life it is important that we take note of this any christianity that makes the outcome of your life absolutely dependent on god with no particip participatory contribution on your own part is not a responsible faith practice so whatever will happen in my life and your life will number one depend on god the sovereign factor the ultimate factor but it will also depend on a willing and obedient heart did the bible not say if ye be willing and obedient it says you will eat the good of the land not if ye be around when the words are spoken if you are willing to participate with god and if you are obedient to walk in keeping with the demands that the instructions place on you it leaves you with an assurance that you will eat the good of the land are we together now many people have not come into a proper understanding of how the kingdom was designed and how it operates so you will find out that there are when many well-intentioned believers who are never able to live an impactful life who are never able to do much for god and the simple reason is because they do not understand that there is a role that they have to play in actualizing destiny there is a role that they have to play in manifesting prophecy if it must happen in your life and my life whether it be impact whether it be a glorious life whether it be a colorful destiny 
it will always be a partnership between the God of heaven and a willing and obedient heart hallelujah the second information I want to communicate very quickly is that excelling in this kingdom at any level is knowledge dependent please write it down any kind of excellence and any kind of results in this kingdom is knowledge dependent someone shout knowledge one more time say it with conviction say knowledge that means this is a kingdom where your degree and the extent of your exploit your showing forth it does not just depend on the might of God alone it does not just depend on the love of God for you alone it does not just depend on the wisdom of God alone it depends on your having the requisite level of knowledge and understanding let me give you two or three scriptures very quickly Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 it's a very popular scripture Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 I'll quote it for the sake of time it says my people the first two words my people although they are my people the Bible says they are destroyed not because of the extent of the strength of the devil not because of the extent of the limitations in their lives as far as their background is concerned they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge we can go back to kjv my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge he said because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou be no priest unto me the second scripture to buttress on this is found in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians 4 and verse 18. So I've, I've said two things that possibilities and results in this life depend on the partnership between the God of heaven and then a willing and obedient heart. We are celebrating the mighty things that God himself has done and continues to do in RCCG and in the life of our father today because there is an almighty God, the almighty God. But then there is a willing and obedient heart. That's what is responsible for the results that we now enjoy. And then that excelling and results in this kingdom is a product of knowledge. Ephesians 4 and verse 18 please it says having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart that means in as much as it is true that through the death the burial the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus Christ the Bible tells us that on account of what we know and call to be the finished work of Christ, there are possibilities that the Bible calls blessings in spiritual, in, in the heavens that have been made for us. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But walking in the reality and the experience of these riches, that includes the potential and the prophetic uh, destiny that shows forth a prophetic destiny of impact it is impossible to walk in that reality until and unless you have knowledge the purpose of this conference among many other things God has put together great vessels to speak to you the purpose is to be able to bring you to a level of spiritual enlightenment so that you will have the requisite level of knowledge that it takes to activate this prophecy of showing forth. I submit to you sincerely that if you are bankrupt of knowledge, this will only be a cliche and it will only excite you emotionally but you may sadly never be able to walk in the experience of it because this kingdom is knowledge dependent and talking about knowledge let me state here that every dimension of result in the kingdom 
has a requisite level of knowledge that you must rise to to activate that operation in your life that means just having random knowledge or casual knowledge or low level knowledge is not sufficient enough to bring you the results you desire this kingdom demands high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination I want you for instance just look around anywhere you see light in this beautiful um, this 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 beautiful um, uh, place here look at this light and look at the light all over do you know that the reason we are able to see ourselves and the reason I am able to preach comfortably is because the light that is here is high enough to drive every darkness is that true if all the lights in this place this campground were suddenly put off I hope you know that the phone the device that you have has a little touch light also is that true but the light there is not enough to swallow up the darkness but it is still light so if you put on your touch light and all the lights here went off listen carefully it will be light enough for us to identify you are there but not enough for us to know who is there and the details of the information are we together there are many of you the light that you have is just enough for us to know you are in the world but not enough for us to know what God has put inside you because the light is too small to make any reasonable impact but someone's story is changing in the name of Jesus <laughs> now look up please isn't it interesting that whether you are watching from Lagos whether you are watching from America whether you are watching from Nigeria whether you are watching from Europe the moment it is day when everybody looks up we all see the Sun is that true we see the Sun not just because of the fact that it is high up there the size of the lights that and, and, and you know the size of the Sun compels everyone on earth 7.6 billion people and counting when you look up you see the Sun it's impossible to confuse the Sun for an aircraft it is impossible to confuse the Sun for his, for maybe a little uh, um, uh, what do you call it a spaceship or something when you see the Sun it is bright and large and unique enough from today I prophesy unto you the same way everyone can see the Sun that is the same way they will see the hand of God upon your life hear me I submit to you that it is not where you are that is a disadvantage is that the light is not bright enough are we together when your light is bright enough it can compel men from everywhere to come and see the goodness and the mercy of God in your life now look up please I have told you that knowledge is very important and that your knowledge must be at a high level the higher your knowledge the higher your impact the higher the level of light that you have in your life and destiny the more unquestionable your results and your impact is concerned the people who are manning your video cameras here they are not manning it based on ignorance you may be anointed but if you stand behind this camera and you do not have sufficient knowledge you are only going to be wasting your time around it is that true the Bible says the labor of the fool weary at every one of them the fool there not being an insult is a description there is the absence of light can turn an individual to look like a fool he says the labor of the fool weary at every one of them because he knoweth not how to get to the city light of the world 
you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see it's my prayer lord you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see you're the light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see so here i am to urge here i am to bow here i am to say that Watch this. Do you know the Bible tells us that from age 12, this is Jesus. Remember, the Bible tells us to look unto Jesus and it calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. At age 12, Jesus was found in the temple, even though he was the word incarnate, even though he was the word of God, he still found himself in the temple, learning and building capacity. By the time we get to Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says after his baptism, he was driven of the spirit into the wilderness. When Satan came to tempt him after praying and fasting for 40 days, Jesus looked at Satan and he did not say, I think. He did not say, maybe. He did not say, I'm not really sure. He said, it is written. A product of knowledge. When he met with the scribes and Pharisees, he began to teach them, is it not said in your law, this and that and that, but this is what I say, knowledge is powerful. But very quickly for the sake of our discussion tonight, there are three areas of knowledge that you must have in order to rise, in order to shine forth. There are three areas. Please never forget these areas for the rest of your life. There are three areas. I call them three levels of knowledge, if you want to put it in another way. There are three levels of knowledge that every man on earth who desires to make impact for Jesus, every man on earth who desires to be used mightily by God to do much for the kingdom, and let me tell you it is God's desire for every one of us seated here and those following online or following by way of television everyone has a destiny in Christ and if you know what God has in store for you you will not spare to give your all and your best to live a meaningful and an impactful life say amen, amen. so there are three levels of knowledge that you must have are you ready now I'll give it to you quickly and then we'll pray. Number one, the first level of knowledge that is responsible for shining forth, responsible for a life of impact, is that you must know God. That is the first level of knowledge. The knowledge of God. You must know God. No matter what else you know, if you do not know the God of the Bible, forget about impact by God's definition. If it is true that impact and shining or showing forth is dependent on knowledge, then I tell you that the first kind and the first level of knowledge that you need is the knowledge of God. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. Daniel 11 and verse 32. The B parts, let me quote it very quickly for sake of time. Here's what the Bible says. But the people, but RCCG youths that do know their God, it said they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. <laughs> now listen carefully. Do you notice that that scripture never said, but the people that do know God, 
the people that do know their God two things will come into their life and will be expressed in their life number one is strength capacity stamina to survive all of the vicissitudes of life and then number two it leaves you with an assurance that they shall do exploits the people that do know their God in John 17 and verse 3 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven to pray and in his praying this is what he said this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent when you know God you will be able to stand and face the challenges of life with confidence and with dignity most believers want to explore destiny and the faith life and they do not pay attention to knowing God cultivating an experiential and a functional relationship with the God of the Bible listen to me this is more than just being born again this is a deeper experience being born again is the first and most important but not the only there is a deeper level it says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you there is the stamina and the confidence that happens to you when you know god when david stood before goliath it was not just the strength of his sling that gave him confidence he said you come to me with your bows and your spheres but i come to you in the name of the lord god whom you have defied do you know god can you say i know him let me give you one other scripture we're still talking of knowing god in ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 ephesians chapter 1 we're reading 15 to 19 please write it down very important scripture paul was praying over the church in ephesus and he said wherefore i also after i have heard of your faith in the lord jesus christ and love unto all the saints 16 he said i cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers what was the prayer request that the god of our lord jesus christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him in the knowledge of him verse 18 the eyes of your understanding he says verse 18 being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints the last verse now 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power when you know God then you know his power then you know his love then you know his integrity then you know his consistency there are things you can never believe until you know God now watch this a few of you here I presume by the privilege of God's grace know me here and if someone suddenly comes up here and tells you I am Joshua Selman because you know me you would look at the person and say no 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 this is not the person we know is that true when you know God you know what he can do and you know what he cannot do how can I call on your name and end up in shame no way that's the God that we serve how can I call on your name and end up in shame? No way. No way. Because you are my God. Someone prophesied upon your destiny. You are my God. You are, you are, you are my God. You are
listen to me the basis of our confidence in this kingdom is not in anything physical your life is already at a risk if your confidence is based on money if your confidence is just on your qualification as important as these things are the believers confidence it says I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded it is based on the knowledge of God that you can dare the devil you can dare destiny I may come from a background where nobody has known about me you may not know me but the God that I know will force you to know me the God of heaven when you know God then you will know that God is love when you know God you will know that God is all-powerful it says once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power belongs to the Lord so when God sends you to go to a place where there is no physical connection you will not be afraid because you know the one who backs you it says yeah though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil why for thou art with me they looked unto him and he said their faces were lightened you are my God now listen very carefully I know that there are people here who come from all kinds of backgrounds there are some of you if you depend on your physical background respectfully speaking there may not be any leverage there as far as an enviable destiny is concerned let me bring you a word of hope ah this god bar listen i will worship him forever love him forever because this god is true I will worship him forever. His God is the one who can pick him an ordinary person. No background doesn't matter. Nathaniel said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Ah, look, this God I am telling you, He can pick you from wherever. It does not matter what kind of family you came from. I'm speaking to you. If you invest in the knowledge of God, then you have made an investment towards a destiny of impact, a life that indeed will shine forth. Listen to me. We live in a world today where people boast of all the things that they have and for someone here you may not have the privilege to boast of a very very exceptional or wealthy family you may not even have the privilege of boasting in terms of exceptional education or all of these things but when you come to this God you see among the many things that he gives you is his life do you know what it means to receive the life of God this life that I have is a life of God this life that I have is a life of God one more time this life that I have is a life of God in me this life that I have one more time, prophesy. This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life of God. So it's so
first level of knowledge if you want to live an incredible life let me tell you the truth when you give your life to Jesus you cease being an ordinary person this is not a preacher's suggestion it is the integrity of God's Word for God so loved the world the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have knowing God has an implication of having such as I have he said number two very quickly is God speaking to someone the second level of knowledge that you need the first being the knowledge of God the second level of knowledge you must have in order to be able to shine forth is that you must know yourself knowing God is powerful as far as your fellowship as far as your rising as far as your communion and your spiritual orientation is concerned but in addition to knowing God you must know yourself oh you must know yourself Psalm 49 and verse 20 write this scripture down and never forget it for the rest of your life Psalm 49 and verse 20 you must know yourself Psalm 49 and verse 20 here's what the Bible says man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beast that perisheth it's important to know God because in the revelation of God is the revelation of yourself you may know yourself in terms of your background you may know yourself in terms of your tribe you may know yourself in terms of your earthly family but it is important that you understand your spiritual identity and I want to show you from the Word of God two things that the Bible says about you number one John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 please give it to us quickly John chapter 1 from verse 6 and 7 you must know who you are there was a man sent from God whose name was Joshua Selman there was a man look at the origin someone prophesied say sent from God say it about yourself sent from God I know that you may call yourself a Yoruba person an Igbo person a Hausa person an European uh, you know a, 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 an African all of those things are just the physical geography but the Bible traces your origin he never said there was a man who came from his mother or came from his father the Bible did not even say there was a man who came from God you did not come you were sent that means God is not scratching his head wondering what you will do with your life there was a space allocated for you sent from God sent from God when you arrived the earth they gave you all kinds of names they called you Joseph they called you Abiodun they called you whatever they, you, is your name but let me tell you the truth you must understand that you came from God and the Bible says he that cometh from above is above all Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall 
Let the rain 